His seizures started when he was uh, nine, ten months old, um, although we didn't know what they were at first. And they got um, gradually worse and worse and, and more and more frequent um, until he was sort of getting to a stage where we were needing to resuscitate him um, 30, 40 times a month. He would stop breathing and we'd have to give him mouth to mouth. Nobody, you know, even if family don't really want to look after a child that stops breathing. So we weren't, we weren't able to, to sleep. Um, he would lie in the bed between us and um, if he, he had like a little movement, if he moved in a certain way, we'd know he'd stop breathing and Stephen would jump up, switch the light on and I'd start giving him mouth to mouth and then he'd have to get up and go to work in the morning again and, and just, just carry on and Sean was only two. So we were doing all of this with a, with a, a two year old in the house as well and it was, it was really, really hard and the, the support wasn't there for us. Um, but after the, it got so bad and he was, he was in hospital, and ended up with the feeding tube, that's when community nursing support kicked in. When we left hospital that time with the suggestion of going to Acorns, I absolutely didn't want to listen at all um, because I didn't think a hospice was what I wanted for my, you know, my not even 18 month old baby. At that time, it, I didn't want to consider it as an option. Um, and I buried my head in the sand for a bit, but we had this lovely palliative nurse who would come out and every time he'd just drop it casually into conversation about, have you, have you thought about acorns and have you thought about acorns? Because I couldn't leave Hugh with anybody and Sean was still only two, that's what prompted me to look into it in the end. I thought actually Sean's missing out on a childhood here because I haven't got the time for him because I'm constantly worrying about keeping his brother alive um, and he needs his mum as well. I think my, my uh, resistance was based on preconceived ideas of what it was going to be like and it really wasn't like that at all. It was a much more happy place. It's a place of, of, of love and warmth and I was happy with that and I thought that yeah we could we could take those steps and we could come back and we did so we started off originally I mean bearing in mind nobody else looked after Hugh at that point um, because I was too scared to leave him with anybody. Me, me and my husband had been solely responsible for keeping him alive um, that I didn't believe anybody else could do it so I rarely left him <laughs> at all. Sometimes I'd sit in another room while a nurse would look after him and they, and, they, and they let me, they never made me feel like I was being overprotective, they never made me feel silly for that. Um, I found it very hard to, to trust that anybody else could look after him the way that, that we had. And gradually we worked up to leaving the building and getting as far as the playground at Cadbury World or the park in Bourneville and, and we worked it really, really slowly um, till eventually I let him stay overnight. When Hugh was staying overnight we prioritised Sean and it meant we were able to take Sean out together so really he'd always had one or the other of us. Um, he could never have us both together because one of us would always have to stay with Hugh. So when he was staying at Acorns, it meant we could take Sean out and we'd just go like bowling or swimming um, or out for a curry, things that would have been difficult with Hugh. And so we would do things that Sean could choose to do and that was lovely. They had just been able to have that so he could have both his mum and dad together at the same time. Acorns helped take the pressure off in those early days. It was somebody to talk to, somebody um, that I could share my worst fears with and, 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 and talk about. So our support worker would come out and, and, and talk to us. And it, I think it really helped us in those early days. It helped us cope with this, the scary reality of, of what we were living with um, and gave us an opportunity to just spend time together as a family. Sort of protected us, I suppose. It was like, like a little bubble that, that kind of protected us at that time. Um, and it, it certainly made accepting the diagnosis a lot easier because I knew that the support was there for us. It held us together, I think. It was a difficult time and, and having acorns back then, I think, really helped.